Now we want to start looking at digital circuit operation. So when you use the term circuit, you're talking about uh, when you're looking at something that is actually operating on electrical quantities such as voltage and current. So this is a little bit lower level as opposed to a gate, which simply operates on inputs that can only take on a 1 or a 0. So we're going to actually start looking at how does an electrical quantity get mapped into and interpreted as one of our two binary states. So the first thing we want to look at is let's start thinking about trying to transmit ones and zeros. So if I have some digital circuit and it is producing a digital signal that is going to be sent over to another digital circuit, if you think about what we want to do, we want to send a series of zeros and ones and the, we want the receiving circuit to understand that we sent zeros and ones. So over here, let's call this the transmitter, and we can abbreviate that by using the, the term TX. This is also often called the driver. And then over here, we're going to have what we call the receiver, or the abbreviated as the RX. And so this is going to be the receiver. <coughs> And these are just two digital circuits, and they operate on ones and zeros, but they communicate with each other using an electrical quantity. So we need to look at how do the electrical quantities represent zeros and ones, how does the transmitter generate those electrical quantities to, to produce zeros and ones, and how does the receiver interpret, it, interpret those zeros and ones. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is start thinking about the most simplest form of encoding information in two states. So typically we use voltage to represent our two states. And let's go ahead and let's just plot something versus time. Or yeah, let's just plot it versus time. Let's plot voltage versus time. And one of the things that we do is we kind of saw how a digital circuit or a digital signal it looks like a square wave and it comes along like this. Well, one of the things we can do is we can define a region in the middle that we'll call this the uh, kind of the threshold region right here. And this region right here divides the signal into two, two regions. So up here we can call this a high, and down here we can call this a low. And if you really think about it, it really is higher or lower than this threshold or switching region. So we'll call this the threshold. And this threshold basically cuts the, cuts the signal range in half, and that's what we want. We want two ranges. We want one representing a high and one re representing a low. And this is how we can define these two what we call logic levels. So these are going to be called a logic level, and these can take on two values, one of them being a low and one of them being a high. And so whenever you hear the term logic level, <coughs> what you're talking about is literally the lower of the quantities. So you're going to have two states, you're going to have a low and a high, and it really is the higher voltage and the lower voltage. <coughs> so at a, an electrical quantity level, that's how we start encoding an electrical signal into these two states. Now, if you think about it, you've cut your voltage into two states, but you really haven't, haven't mapped that to these abstract quantities of a 0 and a 1, which is our binary number system. It turns out that it's arbitrary how you do that. You could, you could think about a high being a 1 and a low being a 0, and that makes sense. I mean, that's the most uh, intuitive way to do it, but that doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You could say, I want a high to be a 0 and a low to be a 1, and that would be pr equally valid because all we're doing is we have an electrical quantity that can be in two states, low and high, and we're going to map that into the abstract quantities of a 0 and a 1. So it turns out you can do it e any way that you want, and there's two ways to encode the, code the electrical quantities. One is called positive logic, and that is where you take a low, and it is representing a zero, and a high will represent a one. If you say you want to use what we call negative logic, that is where you take a low, and you map it into a one, and you take a high and you map that into a zero. So both are equally valid. You can do it either way you want. <coughs> the, uh, 
the positive logic is a little more intuitive. Negative logic is just the opposite of it, but it's perfectly valid. But it does highlight this big difference between a logic level and then what we call a logic value over here. So a logic value is going to be the zero on the ones, so zeros and ones, and then the logic level would be the low and the high. So we've taken an electrical quantity, broken it up into two states or two regions, and then what we do is we map that into our logic values, which are the zeros and the ones. <clears throat> so what we need to start looking at is how does a transmitter actually produce these ones and zeros, and how does the receiver actually receive them? Well, we start looking at this con of output specifications. So we're going to have output specifications. And when we talk about just lows and highs, we are actually talking about what we call the DC specifications. Now, DC means stands for direct current, <clears throat> but in this context what it's talking about is the steady or the stable states. So that means we're not worried about necessarily this transition region where you transition from a low to a high. We're worried about once you're up here and you're in a stable, steady state condition, so you're in a high. We're not going to worry about this right now. What we're simply worried about is, is the electrical signal above or below the switching threshold? So that's where the term DC comes from. And we want to, what we want to do is we want to create digital circuits that are guaranteed that when you output a 1, a receiving circuit can interpret it as a 1, and when you output a 0, the receiving circuit can interpret it as a 0. So what we do is we start defining these things called specifications, and that's going to dictate that these, it's going to give insight into what it means to output a 1 and a 0. And we'll look at the output first, and then we'll look at the receiver, and, dict and the specifications will dictate what this receiver interprets. So first of all, let's go ahead and let's start defining some of these output specifications. <clears throat> and let's draw it on a, on a, single, a single figure here. So we're going to have our transmitter, and we're going to have our receiver. And what we'll do is I'll just draw kind of a, a voltage axis right here. And what's going to happen is that when the transmitter outputs a, a logic high, what we're going to do is we're going to have a range of values that it could potentially drive. Okay, it's, a transmitter is not always going to output a, a single voltage for all time. It's always going to be specified to have a range of output voltages. So we're going to define these specifications. And the first one we'll define is VOH max. So the way that this, this specification, or the anatomy of the specification is V stands for voltage, O stands for output, H stands for high, and then max means the maximum value within this range. So this right here is going to be what the transmitter outputs when it's putting a high, and it's the maximum of this range. If you think about what the lowest would be, it would again be VOH, except this time it would be minimum. Okay? So when you're given a transmitter, one of the first things you do is you look at its specifications, and it'll tell you, the specifications for the circuit will actually say, when, when this transmitter is outputting a high, you are guaranteed that the voltage will be within this range. It will be between VOH max and VOH minimum. And it's, it's guaranteed as long as you don't violate any other specifications. Okay. If you think about what's going to happen when it outputs a low, again, it's going to have a range of voltages that will be output. And they also have a similar, similar syntax. So you're going to have VOL max, and you're going to have VOL min. So this is the range of voltages that you will have when the transmitter is outputting a logic low. Again, remember we're just talking about the, lo the electrical quantities, the logic level, so it's high and low. How you map those into ones and zeros is not really at this level. This level, we're looking at the circuit operation of a high and a low. Okay, so you have those, and then if you think about what does the receiver have, it is going to also have a range of voltages that it interprets as a logic high and a low. So if I come over to here, what I'll have is I will have a similar thing where I'm going to have a VIH max, and I'm going to have a range which is VIH min. So the, the anatomy of this specification is 
I'm going to have V for voltage, I for in, H for high, and then max and min. So this is an N right here. Okay, so this range right here is what will be interpreted as a high. So the system is going to come over and it's going to drive over to here. All right, so I have a range of voltages that output a high, range of voltages that are interpreted as a high. So what I need to do then is as a designer to ensure that I'm going to be able to successfully transmit a logic high, what I need to do is make sure that when I output this range of voltages, it falls within the receiver's range of voltages that are interpreted as a high. If this range right here is down here, it might be outside of the range that the receiver expects, and you have a chance where you may not successfully receive that. In a similar fashion, down here, uh, when you're receiving a low, you're going to have a VIL and a VIL. So VIL will again have a max and a minimum. <clears throat> and this is the range. I'm going to draw that up there a little bit. So we'll have a range right here where this is interpreted as a low. So in order to get the full digital circuit to work, you have to not only transmit highs successfully, but you have to transmit lows successfully. Okay, so those are, those are eight specifications, which are the DC specifications for a digital circuit. And one of the things that you, you notice here is that I drew these, the range for the inputs a little bit larger than the range of the outputs. And that's intentionally because it's intentional because that is actually how digital circuits are designed. And if you think about why that is, in almost all digital circuits, <coughs> what's going to happen is that you are going to have a common, you're going to basically use the highest voltage in the system as the maximum level when transmitting a high. So for example, if these had a power supply of, let's say, plus 3.4 volts, each of the transmitter and the receiver is going to have this same power supply. And that's the highest voltage in the system. And typically that means that that's going to be the best case situation for when driving a high. So that essentially connects VOH max and VIH max together. So you could say that in a normal logic circuit, 3.4 represents the best case output and the best case input. If you also are going to tie a logic low to the lowest level in the system or the lowest voltage in the system, and that's going to be typically what your ground is. So ground is uh, an ideal zero volt. And what's act what that's going to do is it's essentially going to tie together the lowest voltage in the system, and that's how you're going to transmit the best case situation for an output low <laughs> and the best case situation for receiving an output low. So what then ends up happening is that the worst case situation is this and this on the output. So right here is the worst case situation. And if you think about it, the best case situation when driving a high would be the highest voltage in the system, so that's a perfect high. If you then output something that's lower than that, you get to the point where this is the lowest voltage that you would ever output guaranteed. That is the worst case output you could possibly do. So if this was a 3.4, this might be down at a 2 volt. And it's, it's not the greatest thing. But that's the range that you're given. So what you just need to make sure is that it can be received over here by the receiver. Well, if I kind of draw this line over to here, in the worst case situation, I might drive a high at this lowest level. And it assumes, the only way for it to get received, if the receiver couldn't observe it any lower than this, you would have absolutely no loss in the system. You would have no loss as you transmit it from the transmitter to the receiver. And that is never the case because these transmitters and receivers are connected with wires. So they're connected with interconnect. And the interconnect is, is a metal. It's a, it's a material that has loss in it. So you're always going to have attenuation. You're always going to have some sources of noise in this that could not only cause a signal to be smaller, but it could cause a signal to be greater if there was noise that got, got injected onto the interconnect. So what that means is that if you think about a worst case high being driven, the signal could have things that occur to it in the interconnect which could cause it to go lower or cause it to go higher. We don't really care about it going higher because we're in a situation where if it went higher, it's going back into the range of a high. So it's like, that's fine. It would still work. It's when we go lower that we really care about it when you're outputting a high. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to provide what we call margin 
And margin is an amount of, it's basically, <coughs> it's basically leeway that allows the worst case high to be sent and has a, have a chance of actually being received. So that's why the range of the receiver is larger than the range of the transmitter for a particular high or logic level. So if I look at this, if I drew this line and kind of brought this over right here, what we do is we, we see these this range of voltages down here, and that's the margin that's been provided just by the specifications of the transmitter and the receiver, showing that, okay, if you send a worst case high, I can still receive it if there was some loss as it moved from the transmitter to the receiver. This right here is actually given a specific name. It is not only just a margin, it's called a noise margin. So the noise margin, any any signal that's added or subtracted to the original signal is, is in the form of what we call noise. So this is going to be your noise margin right here. And we can actually call it the NM. And it's more than just the NM, it's actually the noise margin high. So the noise margin high, you can, def you can define it as this. I could say NM high, the noise margin high, is simply going to be VOH minimum minus VIH minimum. And that right there, if you have noise margin, it's a positive quantity, you have to have some noise margin in order to successfully transmit a logic high when you're sending it, when the transmitter is outputting at its worst case situation. So that tends to just be built into all logic gates that are designed to work with each other. Now, you have the same thing when you come down here and you look at the range of voltages when you output a low and when you, and the range of voltages when the receiver receives a low. So in this situation, notice that the range of the receiver for a low is larger than the range of the transmitter. And that's by, that's by design. Now, we always want our noise margin to be positive. So this right here is going to be our noise margin. And in this situation, it's actually going to be the noise margin low. And it represents this range right here. And if I wrote the definition of it, I'd have noise margin low, and that's equal to, to keep it a positive quantity, we're going to have, we're going to take the VIL max minus VOL max. And the reason I just do it that way, up here we did the output minus the input. <clears throat> Over here we did the input minus the output. That's just to keep it a, a positive quantity. So this represents the margin that I have when I transmit a low and what the receiver interprets as a low. Now in this situation, we wouldn't care if the signal was attenuated or shrunk. We would more care if noise was injected. So if it was shrunk, it would go back down into the acceptable range of what a low was. But if it was if signals if a signal is added to it what would happen is that it would go above what the worst case situation was when driving a low so that's why the range over here has to have a higher input specification in order to accommodate this noise that was injected on here so this is these are the dc output specifications or the dc specifications for a transmitter receiver pair and the noise margins are defined as such now if you think about what an ideal digital circuit would be. If I wanted an ideal digital circuit, what I would have is I would have an output that put the best case situations out. So the best case situation would be when I'm driving a high, I'm driving this and only this. So I would have my range of outputs be basically one actual voltage that's the highest voltage in the system. When I'm outputting a low, the best case situation would be I am over here and I'm outputting the lowest voltage in the system. On the receiver, an ideal situation would be you want a range of voltages that you can interpret a high. So the best case situation would be to have the, the largest range of voltages. Well, since you only have a range of voltage right here and you're going to cut it in two, the best case situation would be if you took this input range and you cut it into a range of input voltages which are interpreted as a high, which would basically, basically be your entire range divided by two, and then the same thing on the bottom right here. So this would be a high and this would be a low. So those, those would be your ideal, that would be the best case situation that you would ever have. Okay, so that is the DC specifications.